Many senior climate scientists say the actual scientific basis for the theory is crumbling. Really? Let's take a look at that assertion and see if there's any truth in it. This is a plot of the level of confidence that various scientists have in anthropogenic global warming. On the left we have scientists with little or no expertise in climate science and their confidence is around about 50%. On the right you have actual climatologists and if you look at that group their confidence level is between 90 and 100%. This is borne out by a series of polls taken of climate scientists. There's seven of such polls and they all get results between 91 and 100% with an average just below 97%. Has this consensus changed over time? Well, not really. The blue curve here is a reading of people's abstracts and assessing whether they agree or disagree with anthropogenic global warming. And that really hasn't changed very much over the last 20 years. But the acid test is to actually talk to the authors themselves. And when you do that, you find, in fact, there's been a steady increase in the uh, enthusiasm for anthropogenic global warming as a viable theory. Now, let's take a look at the time when the Great Global Warming Swindle was published and see if there was any major change in the level of endorsement of anthropogenic global warming here. And you can see, basically, there wasn't. And so that was lie number one. We can't say that CO2 will drive climate. It certainly never did in the past. Despite what Professor Clark claims, there are many examples throughout geological history where an increase in carbon dioxide in the atmosphere has led to increased global temperatures. The most famous and extreme example of this is the Siberian Traps. About 250 million years ago, there was a vast volcanic eruption in northern Russia, about where Siberia is now. That went on for nearly 2 million years. As a result, massive amounts of carbon dioxide and methane were released into the atmosphere. That caused ocean temperatures in some places to rise to 40 degrees centigrade, that's over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. It is believed that this caused the Permian mass extinction, where 95% of all species died out. Now I have just one question. How come a professor of geology does not know about the Siberian traps? I think that means that this is lie number two. Since the mid-19th century, the Earth's temperature has risen by just over half a degree Celsius. But this warming began long before cars and planes were even invented. What's more, most of the rise in temperature occurred before 1940, during a period when industrial production was relatively insignificant. After the Second World War, during the post-war economic boom, temperatures, in theory, should have shot up. But they didn't. They fell. Not for one or two years, but for four decades. In fact, paradoxically, it wasn't until the World Economic Recession in the 1970s that they stopped falling. So they show us this graph. But there's something screwy about this graph. It doesn't look like any of the data that we've ever seen plotted before. So what I did is I went to the NASA website, because they say that this data is from NASA, downloaded their data and plotted it from 1880 to 2000. And this is what I got. You can see the NASA data actually looks nothing like the data that they are claiming. So what's going wrong here? Now some clever folks have gone back through what the great global warming swindle people did and found that they put the wrong axis on this plot. It actually should be from 1910 to 1980. So I went back and got the data from 1910 to 1980 and overplotted it on the plot and there you are. It's very, very similar. Not exactly the same, so there's still something wrong with all of this, but nonetheless, it's very, very similar. So this is the actual graph they should have shown us from 1900 to 2007. And as you can see, it looks nothing like the graph they actually did show us. Now we can see how much warming there was before 1940 compared with after. That's shown with a little arrow on the right. After 1940, we had this amount of warming, which is far more than twice the amount that was seen in 1940. And if we go to the present day, there's yet more warming. 
so their point there is completely wrong. There is still a matter of this cooling trend from 1940 to 1975. And indeed they are correct in saying that carbon dioxide was increasing throughout that period. But the point is it wasn't increasing as fast as the amount of aerosol content of the air. Aerosols tend to cool the atmosphere. And it wasn't until the effects of the Clean Air Act that were passed in the early 70s started to take hold in 1975 that the true effect of carbon dioxide started to dominate the overall global temperature. So that was lie three. Unfortunately, they have yet another graph problem. This is a plot from the IPC's first report published in 1990. And it shows the average global temperature over the last thousand years. And you can see back there, about a thousand years ago, there was the very prominent medieval warm period. Now, the great global warming swindle glommed onto this and produced their own version of this plot. Here it is, looks very similar, but they've added something. Now, they claim that the last point on that plot is now, which would have been 2007. But it isn't. So this point is 1980 at the very best. But in 2007, when the Great Global Warming Swindle was first broadcast, they already had the data from the fourth IPCC report, which showed this equivalent plot. So I've got that, and here it is. So here's the medieval warm period, and I put a red dotted line there at the maximum temperatures during the medieval warm period. And now I'm going to put on what the temperature is during 2007 when the Great Global Warming Swindle was, was published. And as you can see, plainly, the temperatures today are at least 0.3 to 0.4 degrees centigrade warmer than during the medieval warm period. And if you went to the actual today's temperature in 2018, it would be about another 0.2 degrees centigrade warmer yet again. So lie number four is that the medieval warm period is warmer than today. So here we are, barely 10 minutes into this video, and I've already found four major scientific goofs. So I can only conclude that the great global warming swindle is in fact just that, a swindle. Pay no attention to its out of date and uh, biased messages. Until next time, goodbye.